Hi, uh, it is Bryce and I'm reporting from my living room and uh, because I'm bored I thought I'd show you some of my bottle collection. This is going to be the cream of the crop stuff that I have on display. Um, I have a bunch more bottles that I've either gotten rid of uh, as I've become more picky with what goes into my collection uh, and then others that I have in storage under my bed because it's less impressive. So this is the creme de la creme as they might say. Um, so, shall we? So, that clear bottle, I don't know what it is. Um, I just thought it was cool, and it's a cork top. Uh, same thing with the green bottle. It's an old soda, but there's no markings on it to let me know what it is. This brown one is an old Schlitz beer bottle. It says Milwaukee on this side, and then if I were to spin it around, uh, it says Schlitz on it. This one in the middle here says citrate of, magne citrate of magnesia, which was for uh, helping move things along digestive-wise. That's a cork top. Most things I'm gonna be showing you here are cork tops because of the old, those are older and more impressive and um, with a couple exceptions. This is a Dr. Price's Delicious Flavoring Extracts bottle. Uh, so food f food flavoring bottle, but it's in the style of a medicine bottle. Uh, it's one of my favorite styles of bottles. Um, here we have two different sizes, the big one in front and then the smaller one behind it. But they both say Little Bo Peeps Ammonia, uh, which sounds kind of sinister, but that was actually uh, used in doing your laundry back in the day before detergent. This bottle says Bunte Chicago, which was a candy company back in the day, so that had some kind of candy on it. I'm not sure what this brown, little brown cork top is. Um, I have a number of milk bottles. I really like collecting them, and uh, they're easier, not, I won't say easier to find, but they tend to survive a little bit better than um, some of these other bottles, just because most of them were made to be washed and returned and used over and over and over. So they were built to last. And so if they're in a dump or in a stream and they get knocked around, they can take a little bit of a licking. But this one um, is particularly cool because it says Irving Park Dairy Company and it has the address here on, at, on Addison here in Chicago. I haven't found any other bottles like that. And in research, I haven't been able to find anything either, which makes me think it's probably pretty old and potentially rare. However, um, unfortunately, bottom's broken out of it. So were I to find some other bottle like this, I would probably get rid of this one and replace it. Um, next to it, oh, I have this little beautiful little cork top. I don't know what went in there. And this one's cool because it has the cork and a glass applicator still in it. I believe it held paste because when I went to clean it, it was really sticky and you can still see the residue of what's in there. That's a cool little old bottle though. Anyway, um, so I got these two Ike's Dairy bottles. It was a uh, dairy that used to be here in Chicago. Uh, the one on the left is a half pint, and the one on the right is a full quart bottle. Uh, so the one on the left on the back says cream, and the one on the right would have been for milk. Then I have a bunch of Bowman Dairy bottles. So Bowman eventually bought Ike's, and then later Bowman was bought by Dean's, which is still around. But anyway, I have a quart uh, Bowman bottle on the left, two identical pint-sized Bowman bottles, and then another Bowman bottle, but with different style embossing. And that one with the different style embossing right there is the first milk bottle I found, and the first bottle I found um, almost a year ago that got me started on this hobby. So that's pretty neat. Uh, these two are, uh, say, you can't really make it out, but it says Boyd's Genuine uh, Real Mason, and they're the caps to old mason jars, and they were made out of ceramic or porcelain, I'm not really sure. Um, here I have four half pint uh, Dairy United bottles. They're all exactly the same, except this one right here doesn't have the little indentations on the neck that the others have. So that's a interesting variant. Collectors like to look for those little differences uh, and will pay money to get the, all the different variations. 
This one right here is a little cork bottle. I think it was probably some kind of lotion or soap. Um, you can make out the word slick in what's left of the label. Below it, you can make out the word body. And at the very bottom, you can make out the word Chicago. So, um, speaking of hand soap, this or uh, cosmetics, this was Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. And it was uh, basically lotion that was supposed to be good for your hands. Um, to, that's a Pat D bottle, which means it was in from uh, probably in the 1950s or early 60s. It's broken, unfortunately. Uh, and the bottom, it says Chicago, so it was a local bottle. Um, here I have two identical Listerine bottles. Packaging used to be a lot smaller. <laughs> Uh, and they say Lambert's Pharmacal Company, which must have been the company that used to make Listerine. Uh, behind it, three brown cork bottles. Uh, the one all the way on the left and one all the way on the right, I think, are medicine bottles. Um, further evidence of that is this one has an M or W on the bottom. So I'm assuming that's what that is. There's a cute little brown cork top. And I got a couple of ink bottles right here. This one's probably from the 1960s. It has a screw top, um, but it has some embossing on the front of it that says tilt to fill pocket, because it's got this glass pocket built in. Uh, and if you tilted it, just enough ink would pour into that pocket so you could dip your pen and without getting uh, ink on the, uh, the handle of the pen, so you wouldn't get ink all over your hands. Uh, over here is another more traditional inkwell. I found this in my most recent hunt. It said Sanford's on the bottom. It's cracked, unfortunately. Uh, over here I have a bunch of food jars. Um, these two in the back are pickle jars. I think it's this one. It says... Oh, Fanning's Bread and Butter Pickles. This, oh, I'm a hard time. this is an olive jar, some kind of canning jars. It's also like a ma mason, but not a mason jar. Uh, and I put some lake glass and some old marbles that I found while hunting as well. Um, up here are some milk glass. Um, this was probably all cosmetic stuff, except for this one on the right. On the bottom it says McLaren's Imperial Cheese. So this was actually a spreadable cheese that used to be on the market, or it might still be actually. Um, but it's funny what small packaging it used to come in. I, can, I would eat, definitely eat several of those whole jars at one sitting. Um, over here are some apothecary bottles. You can see the measurements up and down the side. I have a bunch more of those, but um, they all have screw tops. These were the only cork top ones that I have. Um, this. As I said before, the medicine style bottles are my favorite, uh, along with the milks, I guess. Um, on the left, it says Watkins. That was a brand. The middle is a do another Dr. Price, Price extracts bottle, and the one on the right is another one of my is one of my favorite uh, bottles. It says California Fig Syrup Califig Sterling Products Inc. Successor, uh, and I, I'm told that's a pretty common bottle, but I've only found one of them. And that was another. Uh, um, the power of figs used to be uh, held in great regard, I guess, or at least it was marketed that way. Um, some other drugs in there that probably did most of the work. And then lastly, I just have some cool little unlabeled cork top bottles. You can see the air bubbles in that front one. Well, I'm not really sure what those were. Uh, anyway, that was uh, that's my collection that I have out right now.